So our first speaker will be Mitsuhira Shishikura from the University of Kyoto. And actually Mitsuhira was one of the first visitors of the IMS and it happened exactly 25 years ago, spring 1990. So it, is, it was a very memorable visit and I think that there was some very good mathematics that came out of that visit. And well, it feels like it was yesterday, but the calendar <laughs> shows otherwise. So let us start with celebrating 25, 25th anniversary of Shishikura's visit to Stony Brook. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so, of course, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I'm very happy and very honored to take part in this uh, celebration. So I had this uh, longer visit uh, at the beginning of this uh, institute, and also I had a shorter visit and conferences. And every time I come here, the, I had a very exciting and inspiring uh, experiences. And I'm happy to be back again in uh, Stony Brook. So today I'm going to talk about uh, what I call arithmetic surgery. And it's going to be a very uh, primitive work, and uh, it's not a general theory, but I'm going to talk about some uh, case study, uh, some cases uh, the, my method worked, and uh, I think the general theory is yet to come. Okay? So first I'm going to talk about uh, tropical uh, complex dynamics. So the people talk about the tropical geometry. When you have this polynomial, you replace this uh, this operation like adding or multiplying by some taking a addition or um, uh, taking a maximum. And then uh, algebraic geometry become a piece-sized linear geometry. And here I borrowed this term tropical to represent that uh, starting from a rational map of uh, one variable, I arrive in this uh, uh, piecewise linear dynamics. So I'm going to define the, a tree and the piecewise linear map on the tree, which represent the dynamics or configuration of the two components of a rational map. Okay, and uh, so this is a kind of old story I studied a long time ago, and uh, unfortunately I published this paper under the name uh, something about the configuration of Elman rings. So people may have think have thought that uh, this is only about the uh, Elman rings, but uh, I also mentioned the general cases, like this case it has nothing to do with Erman Ring, but some uh, a map with the Cantor circles. And uh, well, in short, what I'm going to present is that giving a rational map of this type, like a Cantor circle, uh, what I get is uh, like a, just a real line together with a repeat linear map, like a tent map, but tip is going out of this square. Okay. So together with this uh, piecewise linear dynamics, I'm going to get uh, what's called local models. Now uh, you are essentially collapsing some part of the dynamics, like a circle gets mapped into a fixed point in a, this uh, tree. So I'm losing some information in uh, the original dynamics, and I try to recover some dynamics on this original part uh, as a correction of small spheres and uh, the rational map among the small spheres, I will be more precise later on, but anyway, that represents the dynamics on the vertices or some periodic points on the trees. Okay, and uh, today I'll be focusing more on the inverse problem, in the sense that uh, suppose you're given some data about the tree, pieces of linear map, and these local models, which are collection of say, small rational maps, and then try to reconstruct the original dynamics. Uh, just to create one, or maybe one parameter family, okay? And uh, well, for, for this setting, it can be done under certain assumption about these trees or these local models. It can be done by a quasi-conformal surgery, but uh, today I try to discuss a different approach. So, Sorry? The trees are finite trees. Uh, so, uh, so I start with infinite trees, but I extract the finite trees. Okay. So for the construction, I start with a finite tree here. Okay. Yeah. And then, well, so you, you can have uh, this uh, construction using a quasi-conformal surgery, 
but it's just the existence proof. And if you want to find the parameters for, for such a constructed map, uh, you want to find where they are in the parameter space. Uh, well, so I, it will be coming later. Okay, just an introduction here. And uh, so what I call uh, arithmetic surgery will give you a way to find the constructed rational map within the parameter space, which is close to the point at the infinity in a moduli space. And uh, in a sense, uh, it's a limit where the, the maps degenerate to a lower de degree dynamics. Okay? And there are many related works, uh, like uh, the boundary of a moduli space of rational maps of polynomials, or rescaling limit for degenerating sequence of rational map. Degenerating means that uh, you have a sequence which tends to the uh, lower degree polynomial uh, or rational map. <coughs> and also it's related to uh, dynamics over Puzu series field. And uh, I listed the name of uh, people. Uh, I may be missing some of them, and I'm bad at uh, keeping track of the reference. But anyway, anyway uh, let me go, go on with this. So I don't know how much I should talk about uh, this uh, general introduction to the complex dynamics, but let me go just quickly. So it, I'm interested in the iteration of rational map on the Riemann sphere, and then it's the sphere splits into two parts, one where the dynamics is uh, tame, the other part is uh, chaotic. And uh, so, well, today I talk more about the Fatou set, where the dynamics is tame, and there, these are there's some examples, and probably have seen already in the, in, on the poster of this conference, you have seen some Julia set. So uh, just to mention the basic stuff, so whenever you have this rational map of degree two or more, uh, there's a, a theorem by uh, Sullivan, uh, which says that uh, if you take a component of a two set, then it's eventually periodic. Okay. <laughs> And the periodic uh, part of dynamics is classified into four types, or possibly five types. Uh, like attracting basin is a where, where you have attracting fixed point. Everything is attracted here, a parallel point. You have attracted to a parallel point on, in this sense. And then Ziegler disk where dynamics is irrational rotation. Erman ring, this is a ring domain where you have a, a irrational rotation. Okay. So, well, suppose. Uh, well, uh, coming to this conference, I suppose that many of you uh, you know about this. So I'm sorry that I went so quickly. But then I go want go back to the basic thing about the complex analysis. So suppose you have a domain in the C hat, the Riemann sphere, which is doubly connected, which looks like this. Then it is known that there is a conformal mapping onto the round annulus of this form. Uh, and it's more or less canonical up to some uh, like rotation or uh, scaling or flipping and so on. And the, this quantity is called the modulus of this annulus, A. And uh, you can also think of this domain as a cylinder where circumference is one and the length is horizontal length is modulus of A. Okay? So for today, it's better to have this picture, because uh, the length will be direct, directly related to the modulus. And the modulus is a conformal invariant. And uh, if you have a covering map from one annulus to another one of degree k, then the modulus is multiplied by this uh, covering degree k. Okay. And then there's uh, what's called the grudge inequality. So if you have this picture, big annulus, and the sub annuli, like this, which are nested or essential within this annulus, then there's a relation the inequality among these uh, moduli. So the sum of the moduli of these sub annuli is uh, less than or equal to the modulus of the big annulus. Okay. And uh, well, other things is uh, here you have a round circles. So by putting back, uh, you have a foliation of the annulus by these circles, what I call circles, which are inverse image of the round circle. And uh, for the later use, I define the set of, uh, for any two points and C hat, uh, A, X, Y, 
will be the union of circles in this sense that separate x and y. So if x is here and y is here, whole annulus will be this annulus. But if we have x here and y here, then it's like a half of the annulus here. And if you have x here, y here, then it will be empty set. So I define the empty set as a modulus 0. Okay. Uh, now, <coughs> uh, first I define something which is non-dynamical. So suppose you have a collection of disjoint annuli on the Riemann sphere. Okay. Just I draw the annuli in this way, and they are disjoint, and try to construct some tree from this uh, com uh, configuration of annuli. So to define this, I first define the pseudo metric uh, by, uh, by the, this uh, sum of all annuli from this collection. Could be infinite collection, but take uh, two points and take a part of the annulus uh, separating these two points and take its modulus. If it's empty, it will be zero. So if you take, for example, two points like this, then the part of the annuli uh, separating this, these two points or these uh, yellow shaded regions. So you just take the sum of moduli of these uh, yellow ones. And this is the definition of D of x, y. It could be infinite. But uh, it, it can be checked that uh, this satisfies triangle inequality. And uh, you try to take the quotient by saying that the two points are identified if the distance with respect to d is 0. Okay. Uh, then what you get uh, is uh, one circle like this will just collapse to be a point. A connected component in the complement will be collapsed to a one point, uh, and so on. And one annulus will be the correction of these uh, circles, and they collapse to a, in a segment. Okay. So these are some examples of the image of these points here. Okay. And uh, in the fact is that uh, once you define this quotient space like this, then this is going to be a tree. Uh, <coughs> and uh, D will be a metric, geodesic metric, on the finite part of the tree. Well, you have to exclude the infinite part where you, you have this distance infinite. Okay. And uh, by definition, it is obvious that the image of these circles are dense. Okay. So I had a finite collection in this picture. So you have a finite topological tree, but you can start with infinite collection of uh, annuli. You, you get uh, possibly a topologically infinite tree. Okay? And the fact that it becomes a tree is easy a consequence of a jordan Kauf theorem. Because if you pick a point corresponding to this circle, then that separates into two parts. Separate the sphere into two parts. That means that cuts this uh, quotient space into two, so that you cannot have contain a loop. OK? So this was a uh, 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 non-dynamical tree. But now we are going to a rational map and define the dynamical tree. Okay. Now we start with a rational map of degree two or more. And suppose uh, it has a super attracting basin or a attracting basin or Ziegler disks or Ehrman rings. And uh, for today, I, well, usually I talk about the parabolic basins, but today I'm not going to talk about the parabolic ones. Okay. So if you have these uh, for two components, the periodic ones, then they have a local models. Locally, it's a conjugate to, to uh, like a z goes to z to the k for a super attracting basin, or z goes to lambda z, or lambda less than 1 for attracting basins. And z goes to this Gorin running, it's uh, conjugate to irrational rotation. Oh, this should be alpha. OK, uh, so once you have these model dynamics, you know that the round circles will be, collection of round circles will be preserved. So just uh, collecting these circles, you get the annuli. Well, if you take the full orbit, uh, you may have a critical point of F uh, that land on this do these domains. So you just exclude this, uh, what's called the grand orbit class of uh, critical orbit, just to be uh, nice. And just to remove this, uh, this part or the, the closure from this, these uh, circles, then you get a correction of uh, 
somehow uh, annuli. Well, sometimes you have annulus, but with a critical point, it may kind of split. But you just ignore this curve and uh, take, keep taking inverse images. So if you just uh, uh, remove these uh, critical values or critical points, then the mapping is a covering map. So whenever you have these uh, 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 circles or annuli, the inverse images will be, again, the circles or annuli. So you get the, the basically infinite collection of annuli uh, within the FATU set. So this is a set of uh, annuli, or this joint collection of annuli I take to define the tree. Okay? So for each domain of so these types, I define this uh, collection of circles that defines the collection of annuli, and they get, I get a tree, as before. Uh, so it, the map, original map F itself, induces a map on the tree in a natural way, uh, because a uh, well, circle gets mapped to a circle, uh, and uh, the circle has a, a point as a quotient, and then there's an image point and so on, and the component goes to component, so there's a canonical definition for the quotient dynamics on the tree. Okay. And in fact, uh, this uh, induced dynamics is uh, continuous, and it, actually it's even more. If you take uh, two points on the tree, uh, that corresponds to some annulus on the original sphere. And if you have a covering map from here to there uh, by the dynamics of F, then uh, it will expand the distance by the covering degree. So if it's a degree K covering, then the distance will be expanded by the factor K uh, this way. Okay. Uh, so this way, uh, you have a piecewise linear dynamics on the tree. And expansion factor is always these integers. Okay. Well, there could be this continuity of this uh, covering degree corresponding to this uh, critical point of the original dynamics. Okay. And there are similar construction by uh, McBall and Marco um, uh, Pilgrim. Uh, so, well, so I started, so the tree I defined will be, a priori, it's an infinite tree, but sometimes it's more convenient to extract the finite part of the dynamics. So, uh, well, let me skip this part, because uh, you just uh, correct uh, some uh, components of the Julia set, uh, and um, then I only consider the annuli that separate these uh, annuli. And that gives you a, a finite tree, but let me just uh, go on. With this and as uh, I mentioned, if you have uh, such a dynamics that you have a counter set of circles, then you have these annuli, and each annuli in the FATU component will be crops to the segment. And in the middle, you may have this kind of uh, annulus, and maybe this part maybe crops to a point, and this part will be crops to a segment, and so on. And if you have a a fixed point here, it would be a fixed point at uh, at the infinity. Okay. Yes. Oh, this has finite diameter, or it might have infinite diameter. Oh, it usually has an infinite diameter. Okay. For example, this case it has an infinite diameter, as the total tree contains a minus infinity and plus infinity, because the point at the uh, the zero will be a point at infinity. So of the moduli is the length in the dot dot here, right? Yeah, uh, so for some cases it's finite, but uh, for example, around here you have a, a sequence of annuli, and the sum is infinite for around this point. So they, it's a point at infinity. And the induced map for this one will be this tent map uh, with slope 3 and minus 3. So the tip will be out of this box. Okay. So the invariant set within this box will be a control set on the interval, that represents the counter, uh, correspond to the uh, counter set on the tree. Okay. This is the simplest model probably to explain. And then uh, there is something missing in this construction because you're collapsing everything to a point. Uh, well, for example, if you have a complementary component of annuli, then a single component corresponds to one point, and what's happening on the component will be collapsed to a point. So, for the inverse construction I talk about later, I need to recover this information in one way or another. So this is the definition of local models. So 
Suppose you have, uh, say, tree and the periodic point on the tree, say, uh, say period of three point, and maybe it may contain the branching point and corresponding to the Julia set in the original dynamics, then uh, this, the smooth circles were dense. The image of the circles were dense, so you may cut these points uh, by this image of the circles. Then what does it mean in the original uh, Riemann sphere? So you have three uh, circles that cut the, the Riemann sphere, two circles that cut out, two circles that cut out, so you get the three regions corresponding to red, uh, to red dots here. And then I just forget, so take the copies, three copies of these domains, and for this one I forget about the two others, and for this one I forget about the two others, and so on. And naturally it uh, gives you a dynamics on this shaded region, and then I fill in the remainder by a simpler dynamics, and you can do this by a surgery to construct a simpler dynamics than this, uh, the original one, but the map is acting on the collection of spheres, not on a single sphere in general. If you have a period, period three point for here, then I will get the three spheres. And I call these uh, th small spheres and the local models, which are the maps on the small spheres. Okay? And later on, I'll be talking about the rescaling limits or stretching deformation. So in one sense, one way to construct this, these ones are to use a surgery, but the other point of view, it's like a limit of stretching deformation. So you lose everything else in the, in the remainder of the ones, and you take a different normalization for each sphere, and it result in this uh, uh, non-trivial limits. Okay. Uh, so uh, I have to go quickly here about the quasi-conformal surgery. So I'm sorry if you don't know about uh, the quasi-conformal mappings or the surgery, but uh, there's a nice technique in a one-dimensional complex dynamics, uh, which is uh, quasi-conformal uh, mapping, and that's a very flexible uh, tool so that uh, generally whenever you have uh, analytic mapping, you can't face the two different maps because there's a theorem of unicity so if you can continue two maps, then they are actually a genetic continuation from the first place, but uh, there's a way to construct a new dynamics just to place, placing two maps and uh, modifying the complex structure. Uh, so going through non-analytic mapping, you may be able to create a new dynamics. And uh, while the converse construction, the basic idea is very simple. Start with a tree with a piece size linear dynamics and for these uh, vertices or some, uh, some of the periodic points, you associate these th small spheres and the dynamics on the small spheres at the local model. And then you just replace these uh, uh, edges of the tree by a cylinder and uh, glue them into these uh, small spheres. You get uh, some object which is uh, homeomorphic to the sphere. And uh, this point, it's a topological con construction, but uh, you can make uh, it analytic in one way or another to obtain a rational maps. So in short, uh, when, when you're given a uh, piecewise linear map on the tree and the local models on the small spheres, under certain conditions, you, you can do this converse con construction. Okay. Okay. Uh, but today I don't want to go into the detail of this construction, but uh, I want to say that uh, this construction is a kind of well, general existence theorem, so it guarantees that there is a rational map satisfying uh, this property that the tree is this one, local map is this one, and so on. But in general, you don't know where it is. So you don't know where we can find the map you constructed. Okay. And uh, so today I try to do something else, a uh, uh, different approach, to find the result of the surgery. And this is what I call uh, arithmetic surgery. Okay. Uh, so the, before starting uh, the discussion about the, this arithmetic surgery, let me tell you some naive idea about uh, the construction. 
So, for example, starting with uh, Ziegler disks, you can construct uh, L learning. So, for in terms of the tree, this is a star-like tree with uh, periodic uh, edges. And uh, so, start with a Ziegler disk of period P, and then you take another uh, cycle of maps, like uh, small spheres, so that it has a Ziegler disk of opposite rotation uh, angle. Then you cut out the invariant disks from both sides and glue them together, like a, just capping the fingers. Uh, you are able to get the Elman rings of this type, so that uh, this ring goes, goes here and goes here and come back. And generally, if you do this construction, if the result is non-trivial, you have to introduce a new pole or zeros in some of the component, or possibly several components, but at least in one component. And if you try to take the limit, so there is a one parameter you can adjust. So where you glue these, uh, these circles. So you may take uh, another circle, invariant circles here and here, then you may get uh, another map with a, a thicker uh, Elman ring, well, with a larger modulus. So if you let this modulus of annulus or Elman ring tend to infinity, then uh, this modulus will be uh, tending to infinity. That implies necessarily that the two points, two uh, new zero pole and zero, must coalesce to a single point. So for this new map, uh, it goes to the, it converges to a lower degree map so that these poles and zeros are colliding to the same point. Okay. And so if you want to find a map with Hellmanning of higher period, uh, then you can do the opposite. So try to look for uh, a map like this and try to perturb so that you are putting new pole and zeros. Okay. So starting with, uh, uh, say, quadratic polynomial, which is a Ziegler disk of period P, with center Z naught somewhere. Then we look for a map of the disk form, say Z squared plus C naught, but you have extra term like this. But uh, these two po uh, the points, alpha and beta, are very close to Z naught. Well, this is not quite zero, but it's zero over F minus C naught, okay? And uh, both of them are close to uh, close Z naught. So if you're away from Z naught, this uh, factor will be close to one, so it's close to this original map. And uh, near Z naught, you do something different, and uh, that introduces this dynamics. And in fact, uh, when I realized this surgery, I wanted to show that uh, there actually exists in the, somewhere in this uh, actual parameter space. And uh, I look at this family with and adjusted these parameters manually on a computer, and I found some parameters for which uh, the, the orbit of critical points look like uh, an learning of period two. And this is a picture later drawn by uh, Ushiki in 1987. Okay. So this is a naive picture, and uh, let me formulate uh, this uh, naive idea in a more kind of simpler way. So start with one annulus on the Riemann sphere, which is normalized, 0, 1, infinity. And suppose uh, uh, annulus is, is in the complement of these three points, and another point, z. Uh, then the annulus is identified with a cylinder with a modulus m, where circumference conference is 1 here, and length is m, modulus m here. Then you try to just to stretch horizontally this annulus, so stretching the formation of the annulus. So modulus will be multiplied by s. Uh, then you can just uh, pull back this conformal structure to here and uh, use the usual conformal structure here that defines a measurable conformal structure on the Riemann sphere. And that can be realized by actual QC mapping to the actual sphere. So uh, essentially, you get a new sphere with a new annulus, which is isomorphic to the, the one we get here. And uh, if you want to have a large S, where this new modulus will be very large, then it is necessary that at this point, the image of this point, must be close, very close to the, uh, zero. So I always normalize these three points, zero, one, infinity, and I don't change this normalization. Then the last point, Z, 
must be very close to the origin if it's in this configuration, if a stretching factor S is very large. So this is called a stretching deformation of an annulus. And you can also think that this Z is not just the coordinate of the point, but the cross ratio of uh, these four points. Um, so I want to take the limit where this uh, expansion factor S is tending to infinity. Then you know the behavior of this point, asymptotic behavior of this point. So the, uh, the modulus of ZS is almost like e to the minus 2 pi SM, or SM is this uh, new modulus. And if you introduce a new parameter, t equals e to the minus 2 pi s, where s is large, so that means t is very small, then this will be like a t to the m. Okay? So the, this the new small parameter, and you, what you get is t to the modulus here. Okay? So if you have a several annuli and apply the same stretching deformation, what do you get? Okay? Uh, uh, first of all, well, I can do the same construction as before. You have uh, fine, this joint annuli. You get a tree like this. And the annulus here will correspond to this segment here. One goes here, infinity goes here, and zero goes to here. And if you have two points, alpha and beta, then it goes like this, and the middle annulus here will be coming here. And then I'm stretching all the annuli by a factor s and apply this deformation, stretching deformation to the whole sphere. Uh, then I knew the asymptotic behavior of these two points. So now I introduce the new parameter s or t. Then these points are not just a point, but the image of uh, these points under this stretching deformation. Okay? Then as we change these parameters, the alpha uh, will be collapsed to 0 of order uh, t to the m1. So it's governed by this modulus. So if you take uh, these two points, these po two points and the cross ratio, the separating annulus is the only separating annulus is this one, which has a modulus m1. And by the same reason as this one, you get a behavior like a t to the uh, m1, where, which is the modulus of this annulus. Uh, suppose you have uh, uh, another point beta, which have another annulus somewhere here, then the behavior of beta, or well, well, the distance between beta and alpha will be governed by this, this modulus, and also this one. So the difference of beta and alpha will be uh, t to the m1 uh, plus m2. Because if you take alpha, beta, and say 1, infinity, the separating annuli are this, this annulus and this annulus, and sum of moduli is like m1 plus m2. m2. Okay. So that means once you know where these points are on the tree, and if you know the modulus or length on the tree, then you know the asymptotic behavior if you apply this stretching def uh, deformation. Okay. So position on the tree plus length gives you asymptotic behavior. Okay? So uh, you should always think that these points, I'm applying these stretching deformation, so it, it, it is parameterized by S or parameterized by T. Okay? Uh, so a, a, the, the method I'm going to introduce is as follows. So we have a given data, which is a piecewise linear mapping on the tree uh, here I assume that it's a finite type, top, finite topological type. And uh, it is a metric tree, has a geodesic metric, and the mapping is uh, piecewise linear and expansion factor, so are integers. Okay. Then for the vertices or some periodic points, I may have a small spheres and the mapping among uh, the small spheres, which are local models. And from these data, I want to reconstruct a, a rational map or family of rational map. So ft with a small parameter t. And this t, this t is the same as the parameter we saw in the previous uh, slide. Okay. okay, so I call it uh, arithmetic because, uh, well, there's another way to think about it is uh, 
for, for this one, it's a one parameter family of rational map acting on C hat. But another point of view is that it's a, a rational map defined over a field uh, of field uh, L, which is a completion of PUZ3 uh, field. It's a, uh, there's a work by Zhang Kiwi. Okay. Uh, so at this moment, I don't know uh, if this method works for general case. I have uh, several uh, the, the cases I have worked out, but I thought it is very interesting to present to you because uh, that there are many uh, interesting related results. Okay. And once you can establish the construction, then in some cases you can check the property of this uh, one parameter family by hand to show that uh, the, this family has a tr this tree and the local models, which are given by this uh, initial data. And there's also another context, not for the tree I defined here, but uh, there's another context where for the scaling limit of rational maps, and it's due to uh, Matthew Arfu. And uh, the same kind of construction seems to work. And uh, so I mentioned at the beginning for this setting. Okay. But, well, the construction I'm going to do is uh, very simple. So I try to represent the family of rational map as, uh, as a rational map. And uh, these questions, or the zeros and the poles, should be uh, like a power series or low run series or even the piezo series in the some parameter t. Okay. And uh, so this is a natural thing to define. And the, this question also is a function of t. Okay. So how do you proceed? Uh, so this is the so first step. It's a simple. So I, I have a whole bunch of uh, spheres. And I want to get choose three important points, uh, mark the points from the small spheres, and I call them zero, one, infinity. And uh, this is the starting point of this normalization. And also, I uh, want probably I want to adjust the length of the trees so that if they happen to have a, a rational uh, proportion uh, between. Uh, the edges, then you ju ju just multiply by some factor so that they have a simple length, like one and two and so on, if it's possible. Okay? All together, yeah. And usually you want to pick uh, these points from different sphere. Well, it's possible, but uh, it's, it's, I'll show you some examples. Okay? Then, uh, once you have a data, initial data like a tree and the small spheres, uh, there are candidates of uh, inverse images of zeros or inverse images of infinity. Because if you have a small sphere containing zero, and if you can find the small sphere that maps to that sphere containing zero, there has to be an inverse image of zero within that sphere. Or sometimes that happens in the middle of the edges, but uh, they are usually the candidate of uh, inverse image of uh, zeros and the inverse image of uh, infinities. So uh, maybe they are not contained in initial data, but you have, to, you have to augment the tree to add these inverse images. So I color them uh, blue for, uh, I think, for zeros and uh, green for uh, uh, poles. Uh, then. By the argument I presented to you before, if you have assigned length for each edges, then each point have asymptotic behavior, different asymptotic behavior like this. And then once you know this, the next point, beta 1, will have a behavior, the difference will have a behavior like a t to the m1 plus m2, which is the length up to here, so on. And if you have another point here, then you don't have uh, uh, any, uh, the annuals that uh, or edges that separate two and two because uh, this one separate this one from three other points, so it doesn't count. So this edge separates, for example, zero and alpha from one and infinity, and uh, for for this uh, cross ratio consideration, this uh, is relevant. But this edge is relevant, so in this case, you have a modulus zero. 
So you have a constant term. And if you have an uh, edge like this with length m4, but the, you know, going closer to the infinity, so you have a negative power in this case. And so on. So we have listed the candidate of zeros and uh, poles, but once you have this configuration, you know more or less what should be the uh, asymptotic behavior in terms of t when you apply this uh, uh, stretching deformation. Okay? Yes? Sorry? In the tree, the cyclic order of edges. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're very, very important. But embedding is not so impo important. For embedding into the plane is not important, but the cyclic orders are also. The all, whole maps, the, the piece of linear map is um, important here. And uh, well, probably you have to add some more uh, inverse image of these points as a marked points. Okay, And then try to. Uh, define, so since we know the behavior, the asymptotic expansion for alpha and beta, and uh, I, I have some more information about the quotient of the previous uh, expansion, like this. Yes? Yeah, the constants here are like, uh, like living in a residual field or something? The constant C times C, so. uh, Well, I was not going to talk about that, but uh, I think you should think that way, because uh, but I'm not a specialist in that direction, so don't ask me. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, if you try to interpret in a, from the point of view of a Kiwi, probably the, that's what uh, we want to conclude. But anyway, uh, so there are some more information coming from this local dynamics about these questions, but uh, let me continue. So I have. I know many uh, inverse images of zeros, inverse image of the infinity, so zeros and poles from uh, this polynomial. And uh, all, for all of them, you have uh, asymptotic behaviors. And then uh, if you try to pick an edge, just imagine this is on the sphere correspond to an annulus, separating these stuff and this stuff. Uh, if you pick a point corresponding to some, a point somewhere in here, then these points are closer to infinity. That means the modulus will be bigger than this. At least when you take the limit, uh, where modulus tends to infinity, or stretching to the infinite factor, uh, this will be bigger. These points will be bigger. If you take these points, it will be smaller than z. So that means if you take these factors, for these ones, uh, minus alpha i's or beta j's are a dominant term for z minus beta something. If you take these points, uh, z will be dominant term. So for the, each factor here, either you have this or that, and uh, you conclude that you get some uh, form of the dynamics like a constant times some power of p t and power of z. Okay. So if uh, this power p, uh, power q here, power of z is non-zero, then it's going to give you some mapping. Uh, to onto some annulus, or say covering of degree Q, and the position of this annulus or edge is determined by this uh, power Q, uh, power P for the T. Okay, and this may not always happen. It may happen that this uh, coefficient, uh, the power is uh, zero if these uh, things are balanced in this factor. So it may happen that uh, the mapping onto this uh, image is just a constant map. In that case, instead of ft itself, try to consider ft of z minus gamma, where gamma is a marked point. So instead of this uh, part of the tree, uh, you just take a part, this part of the tree where this gamma is a marked point, and you do the same argument as here, then uh, you might get a non-zero power so that the, the, the ft maps this segment onto some edge here, a segment on, on this side. So on this tree, image may be constant, but if you add this one, then it goes to some non-trivial edge. Uh, well, you, you can do the same thing for the domain. So I took uh, an annulus separating zero and infinity, but you may take uh, other edge separating uh, some other point from zero and infinity. 
uh, then instead of taking z minus alpha, uh, say, beta j, I take uh, well, z minus beta j is equal to z minus alpha k minus beta j minus alpha k. And you talk about uh, this instead of z and this instead of these uh, numbers and do the same argument. And uh, you see that uh, this segment may be mapped to somewhere, some segment on the tree. Some linear rate. Yeah, on the same as the same rate. And the power is the of the ratio. So, uh, uh, so uh, well, the stretching is uh, kind of involved in this t. So, if you change the t, the stretching would be changed. But now I consider t as a just a kind of uh, one parameter, so that the single uh, tree may correspond to the family of a map. So in, in a sense, uh, it's like a stretching all the, uh, multiplying the distance on the tree by some factor, like a log of t. But, but what is the ratio? The modulus is angular, or it doesn't matter. Uh, well, it, it does, uh, it is very important because uh, in the previous uh, sorry. For, for example, here uh, you get the different orders, and the ratio of these orders will be uh, appearing here and here. And uh, well, if you can multiply these moduli by the same or the length by the same constant, it's like a changing t. But uh, the ratio is crucial in this construction. Uh, right. Okay, uh, so here, right, okay. So anyway, uh, so this is the idea that uh, from one edge you have uh, like a covering map and on the tree it is like a linear map of uh, expansion factor Q and so on. Uh, then what happens at the, the vertices or branching point on the tree so my initial data is to associate the small spheres on all these points. But I drew only two of them here in this picture. And then uh, I had uh, associated the local model. So if the P-size linear map, capital F, maps this point onto this, this point, then I take a corresponding small sphere here and there, then I should have a local model for mapping from this sphere to that sphere, okay? So whenever you have a small sphere, uh, there should be an associated map. So, so capital F maps to capital, uh, capital F maps SI to SJ, then there should be a rational map corresponding to this, these small spheres. So I associate to each sphere each small sphere, a local chart, what I call a local chart. It's a defined globally, but uh, anyway, associated with uh, these local models, uh, which is just a, a family of uh, maybe transformation containing a parameter, small parameter t. And uh, this uh, uh, local chart is defined according to the position on the tree and according to the length of these edges. I show you an example here, but anyway, what I get is a local chart on this sphere, which maps to some kind of standard sphere, and then map uh, the 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 map I want to construct will be FT, but uh, this FT should have some limit, which is close to this uh, uh, local map, uh, the local model. So the, here's an example of this local chart. So if you have a sphere at this branching point, then you have a normal, normal normalization point, uh, 0, 1, infinity, and uh, alpha 1 here. Uh, so in that case, uh, it's a distance in the distance uh, m1 and m2 from this uh, 1 and infinity. So I try to normalize so that uh, this alpha 1 is 10 to 0. So it's 0 minus 1 alpha 1. 
And it, uh, it is scaled by the factor T3 M1 plus M2, which is the distance in here. Okay? So if you have another sphere here going closer to infinity, then I, I scale the coordinate in the opposite way. So uh, I just uh, multiply uh, by a T to the M4, which is the distance in here. So there's kind of canonical association of uh, this uh, local chart. And then my goal is to construct the FT so that uh, this uh, conjugate map. So starting from uh, uh, some sphere, taking phi, phi 1 inverse, and apply FT, and then apply phi 2. And this should be a new map. And uh, I hope that this converges to the local model, which are given at the beginning of the construction. Okay. And the construction, this convergence is not convergence everywhere, but uh, it's a convergence outside some finite number of points. Okay. But, uh, well, it is not always possible. You need to adjust some of the points or some of the data uh, to start with. So I had a asymptotic expansion for these uh, uh, zeros and poles to start with, but uh, I, on, only, uh, I have only given some leading term of the expansion. But in general, it may have a higher order expansion and uh, questions for higher order terms. And each one has these terms. And also, I had a, a question, the capital K, and that has also expansion. So I, need, I may need to choose appropriate questions for this higher order expansion so that this limit is non-trivial, not tending to the constant. <coughs> it may be also necessary that you put some another constant here, which is not degenerating, but some other constant than 1 to get uh, the, the correct limit, which is this, uh, this local model to start with. So there are uh, some uh, questions to adjust. And this is uh, some part you have to do the co uh, computation. But uh, so far, in the cases I have done, uh, this somehow works out and uh, determines all the qu questions uh, and uh, gives you the, the limit you want. And once you can do this construction, and if, if you can choose these questions so that you, have, you get the, the right limit, then, um, and if you have an additional condition that if you take a cyclic part of this local models, uh, suppose that this, this is a hyperbolic map, then uh, this has the desired property in the sense that uh, the tree you construct from this family with the one you started with, maybe up to the scaling of the uh, distance. And you also get these local models as you want it. Okay. And uh, this, once you get what you want uh, as a family, you can check this final result by hand. Because uh, you have asymptotic expansion in T, and all the un unimportant parts are mis uh, disappearing. And by the stability for uh, hyperbolic dynamics, I get uh, the right uh, behavior. Okay. So let me sh say uh, a little bit as about uh, the some examples you can work out. So for example, uh, uh, the tree uh, I introduced uh, was designed so that you can answer some questions about uh, like a connected components of uh, uh, Fatu components, especially uh, multiply connected Fatu components, or uh, the, uh, its uh, configuration of uh, these uh, annuli or uh, multiply connected components. So, for example, one question it was asked by Alain Bierden is that, uh, well, so for periodic Fatu component, it, it was known that either you have uh, simply connected domains or infinite connected domains or possibly an annulus, which occurs for Hermann rings. But for pre-periodic Fatu component, it can have a finite uh, connectivity. By uh, finite connectivity, I mean the number of connected component of the complement. So here, you take a Fatu component, one Fatu component, and count the number of connected component of the complement. I say uh, it's a three connected, if there are three connected component in the complement. 
So uh, can, it, can a rational map have uh, three connected uh, Fatou component which maps to a simply connected uh, periodic Fatou component? And the answer is uh, yes. And uh, of course, you can construct this by a surgery. But if you want to find a concrete rational map, which have this uh, property, for example, in this case, I want to realize a three connected Fatou component, which is mapped to the periodic one, simply connected, and periodic or period two. And it's an attractive basin. Okay. So if you want to realize this uh, kind of configuration, first you work on a tree of uh, this type. So in this case, I start with uh, uh, dynamics of basilica, where you have a polynomial where infinite, uh, infinite point of infinity is fixed, and you have a super attacking period two cycle. Then I want to have a Fatou component, which is eventually mapped onto this period two component. And uh, if you want to make it uh, three connected, that means uh, on the tree, you have a branching point corresponding to the Julia set, and there are two other inverse images of this branching point. And essentially, this gives you one boundary component of the Fatou component, and one, another one, another one. And so this gives you three complementary component or three boundary component of the Fatou component. And this is uh, the configuration we want. And you add some more information about the inverse image of zero and infinity and do the construction I mentioned, uh, you can arrive at uh, some concrete expression uh, of a rational map involving a small parameter t. And as you can see, if you let this parameter t tend to 0, if you, if you set the t equals 0, then uh, you have a factor uh, z minus 1 squared canceling for the top and bottom. And this is 1. So you will be getting z squared by minus 1, which is a basilica uh, polynomial, which is realized here. But for small parameter t, I'll be getting extra component here. And uh, you can easily check that uh, you have a three boundary component mapping to one component here. And this will give you uh, uh, the f uh, pre period Fatou component, which is three connected. And uh, in the middle of the talk, I mentioned that uh, I wanted to construct a, a rational map with a Hellman ring of period two. Uh, you can do the sim similar construction, but uh, you can have a better choice or more efficient choice for the parameters, not uh, adjusting everything by hand. And you should look for uh, this type of parameters. And uh, C for C1, you have to make a specific choice. I didn't write here. But uh, you have a more chance to realize and Elmaning of period two for this family. And one more example, which is not the tree I define in this talk. So I don't have time to define uh, the object, but uh, there's uh, Matthew Arfu attending this conference. He defined, uh, in a sense, similar, but not exactly the same uh, tree for uh, degenerating sequence of rational map when you have a sequence of rational map degenerating to the lower degree map, you may take some iterate of those rational map and uh, normalize the map in a suitable way. You may have a non-trivial limit. Okay? So it is related to the compactification of uh, or dynamical compactification of modular space. But uh, for his case, he comes with uh, also a tree with uh, these small spheres and the mapping associated on the on these trees, and uh, so I had uh, carried out uh, the this type of uh, construction, and uh, I ended up with uh, some type of uh, computation somehow, and uh, this type time, uh, this one is like a cave function, and this one can be any quadratic polynomial. And the parameter can be adjusted by the, the third extra parameter here. So, and there are several other cases uh, you can work on. And uh, somehow it seems to work in the sense that uh, you can determine all the equations which are necessary. And uh, I don't have uh, general theory so far to 
uh, describe uh, this uh, completely general construction. But uh, I thought that there is something uh, interesting here, so I wanted to present in this talk. And uh, I think uh, I should stop now. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and congratulations to the institute and the people at the IMS. I thank again. Are there any questions? Some announcement for it. Uh, so, so I had a, this, this data of trees and the local models, which are the rational maps defined on small spheres. So if these maps are uh, hyperbolic, then I have a control on, for the limit, because uh, it's, in a sense, uh, stable after you rescale the dynamics. Well, the limit set, limiting Julia set is disappearing to infinity or collapsing to some points. Yeah, but once you rescale the, the well, if you change the normalization of the sphere, then you will see this limit. So when the map degenerates, it's very sensitive the normalization you take. So if you just pick one normalization, it's likely that you just, it just tends to constant or lower degree map. But changing this moving frame or changing different coordinate, you may be able to see a different phenomenon and different part of local models. Any more questions? Okay, so before we finish, so let me mention that there will be tea now back in the mass common room, so we have to go all the way back to the floor. As you know, there is a banquet. There is a banquet. Uh, everyone is invited. It's on Monday, um, Monday, May 11. Yeah. Monday, May 11. So we are uh, partially supporting the banquet. If you are, a, if you are a, a student, you pay $15. If you are a postdoc, you pay $20. And if you have a tenure track position, then you pay 30 And uh, so we are, uh, that, the total price of the banquet is $60. If you have a guest, uh, then you pay 50 OK? <laughs> That's the, the deal. Oh, and they, they want everyone to register as soon as possible. Um, so you, when you go to the, to the common room in the fourth floor, please let Lucille and Don know if you're going to the banquet because we need to count how many people will be there. Thank you.